So I'm gonna buy a little bubble edition <laughs> of Junk Ball. First up, who has more to prove in the bubble, Anthony Davis or Giannis Antetokounmpo? What you got? Because Giannis has not yet reached the finals in his career. AD has never been past the second round. Scotty, who do you think has more to prove here in this bubble scenario? Well, obviously it's, it's AD. Uh, you know, Giannis has an MVP on pace to get his second MVP, but not only that, he was able to make it to the Eastern Conference Finals last year. And for me, uh, I, I think it's AD. I mean, I think we all realize that LeBron James had played for the last 20 years pretty much and that he's not going to be the guy that's going to be carrying this Los Angeles Lakers team. So if, if the Lakers are going to go anywhere this season, I think offensively the weight has to be on AD. I think defensively uh, he has to be the anchor for them on that end as, as well. Uh, I know they got guys like JaVale McGee who can uh, control the paint, but I expect them to have to play more of a small ball with AD playing as a big, hmm. but I think this is important for a AD to really uh, break out this season and show that he's one of the better players Scotty, in the game. Scotty, I think LeBron would love it if that were true, if it were really deemed to be on AD's shoulders one way or another, but we know that no matter what happens, Le LeBron is going to get all the credit or all the blame. Which is why I think it's probably in, uh, in, uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo. Um, not for, because of anything that Scotty said, I agree with all of it, but because he's probably going to win his second MVP during this bubble or shortly thereafter. And at that time, he's going to be, you know, known he's going to have to carry the team. And, and what the Bucks do are going to be how he plays. If the Bucks win the championship, he's going to get the credit. If they don't, he's going to get the blame. And I think AD is going to be sheltered a little bit from that, Rachel, whether that's fair or not. We've had a couple discussions on this show where everybody agrees how great the Bucks have been playing, how impressive their stats are, what a great regular season they have had once again, but that that fear factor for a lot of the other former players we've had on the show, Scotty, they've been telling us, you don't get to earn that fear factor in the NBA, and so you at least make it to a finals and possibly win a title. Is that true that if someone like Giannis, we know how good he is, he's an MVP who is likely to be a two-time MVP, does he need to? Is that pressure on him that much that he has to get to the finals or win it to inspire that fear factor in other players? Well, well, for me, I don't think they're ready from a team standpoint. Uh, I think Giannis has definitely been clamming the ladder, getting better. Mm -hmm. Obviously, he's on pace to win his second MVP. I just don't think he has that second player next to him uh, to win a title. I, I do think that they're capable of coming out of the East just because of uh, the competition level there, that they can dominate the teams in the East. But I think when you talk about winning the championship and when he goes against teams like LeBron James teams or even going against a team with the Clippers, uh, he's going to be pushed back. And so therefore, that's why I don't think he's quite ready to, to, to win a title. Maybe he's ready to make it to the finals, but I think there are other teams on the West Coast much better. Well, there's a lot of teams out there um, who are hoping to <laughs> get Giannis in 2021. Um, oh, well, that's 20, even more. That's who want him in 29. 2021, who, wanted to, who want a loss blamed on Giannis and not having his team. So um, that's going to be a factor in all of this, too, because Giannis has to make a contract decision at the end of all this. Absolutely, yes. 22 teams in the bubble, 29 other teams, though, that would like the Bucks to maybe not do so well this season the way some teams were rooting against the Raptors last season. Raptors showed them they could still win a title and the Clippers still ended up getting Kawhi. So we will see what happens there. All right, yeah. next up in the jump ball, who is closer to a title, Rockets or Celtics? I love this question. The Celtics are a strong young team sitting at the third seed in the East. The Rockets have gone all in on small ball, micro ball around Russ and Harden. They sit at sixth in the West, but that's sixth place by just like a half of a game margin. They could end up in third place by the time the seeding games are done here down in Orlando. Brian, who do you think is closer to a title? Boy, back in the old days when we could all sit at a table together, this could get pretty heated uh, because there's, th this is a strong opinion question. Um, I think it's the Celtics, but I'm going to wiggle on a technicality because the Celtics are in the East and they wouldn't have to beat the Lakers and the Clippers to probably get to the finals. Although I have to say, I'm worried about Kemba Walker. They acknowledge that his knee is bothering him. They need Kemba playing well. Plus, Gordon Hayward has said he's going to leave the bubble when his wife gives birth. And so you already know you're going to be down a player in a key moment. So I'm saying the Celtics, but I could be swayed. 
What do you think, Scotty? Brian, I'm a pretty. I'm going to pretty much piggyback off of what Brian said. I, I think that the Celtics uh, definitely would have a better opportunity of, of winning over the Houston Rockets. They've just not shown the progress and the growth over the years. Uh, I know James Harden has been an MVP candidate for the past three or four years, but the, the, the uh, body of work that he's put in to bring his team up uh, just hasn't uh, a state of a float. They've, they've failed below a lot, uh, even from having Chris Paul to now having Russell Westbrook. I thought they were a better team with Chris Paul, which we all felt like getting the MVP like Westbrook that would take them to another level. So I definitely feel like the Boston Celtics uh, is, is in their pedigree. And as Brian said, the East is a little bit weaker. So. They could come out the East and run into a team um, out on the West who could suffer an injury, and here you go, the Boston Celtics win a championship. Yeah, I mean, the fact that they're in the East, it's not a technicality, Brian. Is You said you're wiggling on it, but that, that's just a fact, right? I mean, they're in the East. The road is usually a little easier. There's less people you got to elbow and fight off as you go through your way. I, I did, Brian, I'm a little surprised. I thought you were going to bring out the cone of uncertainty, the martini <laughs> glass of uncertainty for the Houston Rockets because I do feel they have one of the biggest swings of the teams down here in the bubble. I mean, it's fascinating. They've got two former MVPs. They've got a style of play that a lot of teams won't be quite prepared for from the beginning, so they might do well in the seeding games. Of course, a playoff scenario where a team is preparing for them for seven games in a row is a whole different matter. I'm fascinated to see what happens with that team. I'm just not sure I would bet on them to get to the NBA Finals. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.